it didn't as Leonard Skinner. The band didn't was originally called My Backyard. Right. Then it was called Noble Five. I'm gonna, ladies and gentlemen, oh, it's Mr. Steve oh. Vest. I'm gonna introduce you. Um, um, great guy, great gentleman, good guitar player, and um, it's an honor for me to talk to this gentleman. And right now he's gonna give me a signature. This is the uh, fellow I was telling you that played with the Allman Brothers, the Skinner Boys, you know, Ronnie and the Van Zandt Boys, and many, many more. So hopefully we get some interviews with some stories. But for now, meet Mr. Steve Vest. How y'all doing? Yeah, I'm the original side man for Leonard Skinner. I'm the original third guitarist for Leonard Skinner. And I played, uh, 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 I worked on music with him. I worked on some of the songs with him. I'm just going to move around uh, with my camera. You're fine. I'm just going to get different camera. Uh, I can zoom in and out. I wrote the intro for Freebird um, in 1969. And uh, during the Christmas holidays, I, w I was working with Alan and Gary. And... Uh, they gave me, and uh, Ronnie and uh, Bob Burns was our drummer back then, yep. uh, before Artemis Powell. Uh, Artemis is from uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and uh, they picked Artie up on the road, uh, and he's a, he's a real good soul. Uh, I played with him uh, in Jacksonville during the 90s when he lived in St. Augustine. So I enjoyed about three months playing with, with Artie. Uh, out of all the Leonard Skinner members, you know, a couple of them, you know, like it said, uh, I forget his name, the, the guy that came out of California um, and then broke a couple strings during the Free Bird and Ronnie. Are you slipped. talking about Ed King? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, Ed King came out of a band in Oakland, California. Yes. They were known as the Strawberry Alarm Clock. They had a, a big hit on the radio called Incense and Peppermint. And the rest of the band was about. Uh, oh, they were years uh, older than they had. Ed was the, he was the youngest of the um, um, of the band. He was the lead guitarist. Ed didn't join Skinner to '72, and Donnie didn't join. I mean, uh, Billy didn't join Skinner to '72, and uh, so that uh, left somebody else to be in there. Uh, for all those years, who did the fill? That was me, uh, Steve Vest. Uh, I, we need to get your sunglasses. <laughs> I, grew, I grew up with, uh, she knows that. I met Ronnie and uh, Gary and Gene Odom uh, playing basketball in the Christmas holidays of 1964. And uh, Ronnie, uh, kept, he kept uh, fouling me every time I'd go up for a layup, layup shot. And he'd hit me so hard, he knocked me down. <laughs> and by jump, I springed right up, uh, 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 jumped right up, and went eyeball to eyeball with him. Well, see, anybody that had the nerve to go eyeball to eyeball with Ronnie, Ronnie liked. That's just the kind of person well, he was. Well, I think as we were just, you know, starting this video, we were uh, listening to uh, the, the Leonard Skinner um, documentary on Netflix. I think Gary Rodlington said, I think it was Gary, he said when he first met Ronnie, he was playing like in a little league or... Playing baseball. High school. And he said yeah. he hit a line drive, hit him right in the head, and oh, yeah, and I then think... Ronnie came over to him, looked at him, and then, I uh, didn't kill him, and just kind of walked away. Well, Gary was yeah, like, Ronnie was a tough that, that's guy. That's the start of their relationship. Ronnie was a tough guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ronnie reminded us of everybody from Jimmy Cagney uh, to, uh, you know, to... Uh, uh, he was he was a uh, uh, he was a shorter version of uh, John Wayne in his movies. Uh, he had a certain walk. Uh, Ronnie was real strong. He worked out, and uh, you know anybody could uh, could lift uh, uh, you know lift those big old steel bottom stands we had for the microphones back then, and just hold it out like it was nothing. And he, he could do it for an hour or two. May I, mean, may I ask you one question about yeah. Ronnie? Um, the song Mississippi Kid, and he often referred to or talked about Mississippi a lot, and that just happens to be the place where the plane went down. I, do you know uh, why he had, like, I guess maybe, did he grow up in Mississippi, or he, he knew someone there, or just had a, maybe went on tour there and just liked that state and just kind of 
you know, lots of musicians give themselves, like Prince, that's not his real name, B.B. King, you know, Roy. Louis Boy King, his real name's Riley B. King. <laughs> Roy. So, I, I just, well, we know it's Ronnie Van Zandt, I'm just curious of why he always kind of referred to himself as the Mississippi Kid. Uh, well, um, I don't really have a background yeah. on that. I can and tell there, you the background on Sweet Home Alabama. Okay. The, None the, of them were from Alabama, but Lacey, who was Barney's dad and Donnie's dad and Johnny's dad, yeah. uh, and Lacey and and uh, sister, they had uh, relatives up in Alabama. And in the song, he says, "Carry me home to see my kin." Right. You know, and it's like it didn't click see with. You know, the fans, you know, because mm. some think that uh, they were from Alabama. They were not. They Jacksonville. Were born in, they were born in Jacksonville, Florida. We're all Jacksonville boys. Uh, I met them, like I said, playing basketball. Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie had, had been a baseball player. He met Alan playing uh, playing baseball. And, uh, uh, so you met these, these boys when they were the 1% man? Before no, they my backyard. I started with him in the 10th oh, grade. Oh, even before 1%? I was in the 10th grade. Whoa. Now, yeah. Ronnie was two years older than me. Right. No, I did. I, I was with My Backyard, Noble Five, 1%, Leonard Skinner. Seven years nice. all together with him. And, uh, uh, you know, um, Leon and I were in a band called the King James Version. I was the last one to join the King James Version. Um, now, whose idea was it to put that particular, with that philosophy? Because, I mean, Christian... Well, the Christian background. Right. I can give you that, yes. Uh, Drew Lombard and Leon Wilkinson, and I uh, don't remember Tom's last name, but the drummer's name was Tom. He looked like a, a, a young Abraham Lincoln, uh, a real lanky guy, uh, and had war beard and had the, the long, it was just the way he looked. He didn't look like he was from this day and age. He looked like he was straight out of the 1800s or 1700s. And we used to kid him about it, but Tom was a drummer. And uh, I was the last one to join. And um, <clears throat> Ronnie set up my audition. Thank you for thank you for the signature, my friend. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome. I haven't finished. I haven't got started oh, yet. Oh, okay. you're right but, here. Uh, okay. Uh, I was just showing them. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's fine. Uh, but I do appreciate it very much. Thanks to you. Yeah. So I played with I played with my backyard, one percent, Noble Five, one percent, Leonard Skinner. My backyard. The background on that is Gary Washington's backyard. They all lived in an area on the west side of Jacksonville called uh, Lake Shore. And I stayed with friends of mine uh, uh, on the weekends in Riverside. Well, Riverside wasn't that far from Lake Shore, just a few miles. Now, I grew up on the north side where the Hatchet Boys grew up. And, uh, you know, Dave Lubeck and... Uh, uh, Dwayne Rowland uh, were from uh, the north side of Jacksonville. Um, I'm so a in good the late friend. 60s, early 70s, because everybody thinks of that era like the British invasion and the music coming out of California. So Southern Rock was was kicking some major Southern butt Rock, in the uh, late yeah, uh, uh, Southern Rock started with, uh, with Greg and Dwayne Allman. I started with Greg and Dwayne after their second their, after their first band. Their first band was when they were in high school. Uh, it was called uh, at Seabreeze High School in uh, Daytona Beach, and it was called uh, The Escorts. Well, when I met Greg and Dwayne, I met them at a, uh, downtown Jacksonville at Fred Paulus's music store. It's now called the Grand Central Station, and... Um, uh, I haven't been up there since then, but uh, Fred Paulus was a rockabilly friend. I'm on battery power here, so I'm okay. probably going to have about 30 seconds and I'll connect to me. I, I can do a part two, but... I okay, mean, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this um, first part. We'll probably do a second part, folks, so... But the Skinner boys and the Allman brothers were the first ones to start the Southern Rock, and I, was, I played with both of them. Yes. Okay. 
what we're going to do is, um, if, if you're willing to stay for a little while, we'll do part two, and then you can pick up. And yeah, because we definitely, you know, Southern rock is um, one of my favorites, and blues. Probably those two genres. I mean. Well, when you combine country, blues, and the uh, rockabilly. You got Southern rock. Yeah, you got Southern rock. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wrap this video up, folks. Um, okay. Stay tuned for part two.